Board of Education to our order. This is not our normal interview, but it's a really nice change. So welcome everybody to kind of tight quarters. We've got a lot of people to recognize here. Um, first item on the agenda is the presentation of the colors by the NJROTC. If you want to please stand. Oh, oh. All right. R Tom Park Color Hope Please take Colors Hair, cut, or top, heart, over, heart, heart, top, heart, color guard. Hope, order, colors, all right, cadets, if you would uh, introduce yourself, tell us your class and what your plans are for after high school. Good evening, I'm Cadet Commander John Paul Perez. I'm a senior at Gainesville High School, and after high school, I plan to go to Kennesaw State and major in biology. Good afternoon, my name is Cadet Lieutenant Commander Adrian Delgado. I'm a junior at Gainesville High School and I plan on attending UGA after high school. Good afternoon, I'm Cadet Senior Chief Petty Officer Mercado and I am a sophomore at Gainesville High School and after high school, I plan to go to Emory College and become a medical scientist. All right, let's get these guys Everybody may be seated. Appreciate you being here this evening. Even thinking we would have a little bit of space available, obviously. Can y'all hear me okay if I take the microphone away? Y'all hear me good? All right. We use a teacher. So our typical meeting place is the public safety complex where we meet every month. Uh, there's a city council meeting tonight, so we're not able to meet there. And our board office is too small. So we said, well, let's try the media room at the Student Activity Center. And we're learning it's probably too small as well. So this is the first time since 2019 we as a district have been able to recognize our region winners across the district. Usually every month we recognize a school or multiple schools. And in this case, uh, we're able to take anything that happened in the fall and recognize the students, the work, the effort that you put in uh, to these accomplishments, but also uh, the instructors and advisors that were a part of that as well. So first of all, before we get started, let's give all our kids a big round of applause. Thank you. Our first recognition of not deciding not has been been in front of me, I believe, is Ms. Natalie Smith with CPAE, who stands for Career Tech Ag Education, and she's going to recognize uh, some of our students. One of the things that I'll share with you that we we want to leave the kids with something. We also know that usually a bag or a water bottle is going to get lost or somewhere else. We have these tokens that we're giving every kid here tonight, even those that couldn't make it. On one side, it says Gang City School System, Red Elephants. On the back side, it says Go Big Red, Region Winner, established 1892. So think about it for a question. When you graduate in a few more years, how many of these will you have? And so um, the little token will all be the same. It's not year specific, but it's something you can carry with you. Uh, just in your pocket or where you want to go. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Smith. If you'd like a microphone, let's I love that. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, first, we're going to honor our Skills USA students. Um, Skills USA is a partnership of students, teachers, and industry professionals that work together to empower our students to be world class workers, leaders, and American citizens. Um, as our National Career and Tech Student Organization, we serve middle school, high school, as well as post secondary with this organization. 
I am very proud to present, and as I call your names, if you will all come down at the end. Um, our Gainesville High School Construction Program competed in the Northeast Georgia Regional Skills Challenge this year. And I cannot say how proud I am. This is our second year in a row, taking first. <laughs> Woohoo! And for our team competition, that is Blitzo Diaz Francisco Gomez Rodriguez, Gosmar Otero, and Antonio Salazar. And in our carpentry individual competition, we have Osmar Marcelino, who came in third in the entire weekend. If you three will, excuse me, five will come on up, as well as the I really want to give a big thank you to our two instructors that are here tonight. Um, we have Mr. Shane Millwood and Mr. Randy Page, who have spent countless hours helping our students to achieve this. So, uh, Board, if y'all slide in front of the table and shake the hands, they come through. As your name is called and you come up this evening, please come this way. Uh, we have our support in the other direction. Joy's in the back. Our second recognition this evening is Miss Tyra Wimpy and three, two, four, four, five. I like to little script that no pun intended, so I have to speak for you all. <laughs> but it says, good evening, everyone. I'm honored to stand before you today to recognize the performance of Troop 2445's GHSA One Act Play Competition Production of Little Women. The One Act Play Competition challenges high school students and directors to take a two and a half hour show and chop it down to 55 minutes. That's including set and strength. It's a challenge and it's truly an art. Our show consisted of 12 performers and 12 crew members, a GHS alum life designer, Rodriguez Buffington, a GHS alum director, and an adopted by and local director, the amazingly talented Portia Burns. We felt group 2445 started the year off with a new director, new castmates, and in October, a new region title. Hi everyone, my name is Ben Miller, and I had the wonderful opportunity to play Mr. Lawrence, as well as be in charge of set design and the backstage crew for Little Women, and it was such a life-changing experience for all of us involved. It was wonderful to be able to come together two times a week and just combine all of our talents uh, for one goal that we had together. It felt like we were moving as a unit, and we got it when we won region. So thank you all so much. We love the support from our community. Thank you. <laughs> Family members, admin, and staff. Although audition for Little Women started in August, the curtain hasn't closed. Troop 2445 was selected to perform at the Georgia Thespian Conference in February. The Gainesville High School Theater Department's performers are astonishing. And because I knew you, I have been changed for good. <laughs> So if we can, if you are a part of Troop 2445 and part of one act, please make your way up here so we can get a picture with everybody, including the trophy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can also go with it. I'll get upset. I'll have to be like a tight
And if I could get the trophy, you guys on the on your knees, if you could like and the, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ready? One, two. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> And representing our cross country boys and girls team, Coach Rich Corbin. Coach Corbin. Um, thank y'all for being here. And this is a uh, definitely a unique location, certainly. Uh, kind of nice coming out of track practice just now. So we literally just finished practice, changed the walk rooms, and we're back up here. Um, went into the season with high expectations, dropping from a tough region in 7A down to 6A. Um, goals were to sweep all four region titles. And in the end, we swept the varsity and swept both JV. So um, don't want to just recognize the varsity. I mean, I, I want to shout out to the JV because the JV matters to us uh, tremendously. Uh, but our varsity members are here tonight. I think we're short one. If you guys can come down. And then I'll mention that the, um, the boys team finished 10th at the state meet. The girls team finished 11th at the state meet. And um, on top of that, John Jessup was 9th in the state. John is signed with Georgia to run uh, Georgia next year. Uh, Samantha Hartman is also a senior who is signed today with Kennesaw State. Hey, one last thing is Emily Mejia Martinez is walking away. She was sectionals champ over the weekend for wrestling duels. <laughs> Our last recognition this evening is the Gainesville High School football team. I have to ask Coach Nibble if you would come say a few words and recognize the team. Well, first of all, I mean, I'm just excited to be able to stand up here in front of you. I mean, I got here about a year ago, and uh, I don't think people, many people gave us much of a chance to. Uh, or where they thought we were going to finish, but I knew when I met with our team the first time, we had a mindset that there was something different about them, and there was a different makeup about them. Probably the toughest team I've ever coached. Um, mentally tough, physically tough. Um, you know, we're a product of what we expect in our program and the standard we have, which is don't let circumstances dictate to you, let your choices dictate what you're going to be. And so, you know, I'm proud of our, our players. You know, we started a season against Marist and on the road and you know, I think we're, uh, what was it, like an 8% chance to win or something like that. So we won that one, and I knew, I was like, hey, we, we may have something pretty special here. And so we won the region and then, uh, you know, came up a little bit short in the end, but played a team that was extremely athletic. And, you know, maybe it was 35 and 28 in the final game, but I can't say enough about these guys. A lot of our seniors are here tonight, and it goes to them. You know, we're going to have a banquet the 29th, and uh, it's about the seniors when we have that banquet. So. You know, it gives me an opportunity to talk about each one of them individually. So I want them to know how much I love them and uh, and I appreciate them and uh, how much they should make games more proud uh, of what they've been able to do. So thank you guys. Y'all guys come on up. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, come on, slide down. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Part of the graduation requirement for Leadership Hall, which is put on by the Chamber of Commerce, is to attend uh, city school board meeting. So thank and you. she may have picked the longest meeting of the year. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the board commendations. Me and my colleagues have uh, set up a co-prep to coach members. Uh, it did not go unnoted that we had more fans than South Carolina. We had more fans than Roswell and had more fans than Langston Hughes. That did not go unnoted. Anybody else? All right, that ends our recognition portion of the meeting. Uh, you're welcome to stay for the business portion, but if you want to leave now, it's a good time. <laughs> Just don't hurt anybody on the way out. Thank you. 
All right, Ms. Flores, do you have any citizen's comments? Finger wag, that's negative. I'd uh, like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. Mitchell, second by Dr. Gindy. Uh, next item is election of board officers. Oh, excuse me, but uh, I want to may I add it to our event the uh, item five. Go ahead. To include approval of Roman seven and eight. Oh, the Mr. Mitchell and Dr. Randy. All right, we got an amended uh, motion uh, by Mr. Smith. Uh, Second about Mr. Mitchell or Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is uh, uh, adoption of the uh, board officers for 2023. I would like to make a blanket motion that we carry over the 2022 officers in the same role in 2023. Second. That's a motion by Mr. Norholz and the second by Dr. Ramsey. We would have uh, myself and the board chair. Vice Chairs Willie Mitchell and Treasurer Sammy Smith. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item, oh, Dr. Williams, so regarding the uh, first two items of the board, uh, Code of Ethics and uh, Conflict of Interest. Board every January, uh, when we start a new year, uh, we do sign or you do sign the Code of Ethics and the Conflict of Interest. There is a copy of that provided for you in your packet. Please sign it so Ms. Flores can keep it on record. Uh, also, we do submit that as a part of our uh, board um, designation each year uh, with GSBA. On item number two, uh, we accidentally omitted a work session in February, so I believe that is February the 6th. So item number two there just deals with adding a work session on February the 6th, which is the first Monday uh, of the month. There is not a conflict uh, with any holidays or any other dates there, uh, but wanted to bring that for you tonight as an item of information that is being added. So those are my two items. All right, next up is Reverend Niles to uh, discuss the city park improvement. Yes, I'd like to talk with you uh, this evening, present to you some plans as it relates to city park, uh, specifically uh, for a new press box. Uh, concession stand, um, new uh, ticket booths, plaza, and new entrance on the home side and visitor side. Um, we're uh, finalizing plans to do this in a two-phase approach. First phase will be some demolition work of the existing restrooms, uh, some site grading and site prep, uh, building pad for bleachers, Along with that, uh, first phase would be also uh, building the uh, two new two new ticket booths on the home side, as well as two new ticket booths on the visitor side, as well. Phase phase one would hopefully start around March and end in August of 23. Phase two would be uh, the building of the new press press box, concession stand, uh, upper grandstands, also uh, new uh, new grandstand uh, for uh, above on top uh, photo stations as well. Uh, phase two se uh, season would be from the end of football season for 23 and August of 24. Uh, we're looking at uh, increasing uh, seating capacity to 6,000. Uh, we're hoping in the next few weeks to actually come back to you with a GMP uh, no later than mid-February. And then we hope to uh, get approval and we would move forward with the final, uh, final plans, schematics, and also uh, with that GMP. Tonight was just to be an item, item of information to uh, talk to you about it as we 
talked in some other sessions, but to uh, just give you a report on the progress that we've made on the project. So it's been over 40 years, I believe, since the last time there were any uh, additions to the grandstand area. PK Dixon Field House was added uh, about 11 years ago, 12 years ago. Uh, and then now uh, we, we do have a number of ADA issues that are out of that site. Uh, you can imagine a stadium that uh, has been around for quite some time. Uh, you can see the coaches out in this hallway, almost all in force played there. Uh, but the biggest challenge that we have is just some of the safety in the area, updating some of the area. Uh, we do host a number of events here between football. We also do soccer, graduation. We hope in the future be able to have some outdoor uh, entertainment options uh, that involve our band uh, and some others possibly. Uh, so this is a big deal uh, for Gainesville City. Of course, when anybody drives by it, uh, it is a very hallowed grounds. And this is uh, hoping to maintain that concept while also kind of bringing it up to up to date a little bit. Uh, so any questions for Mr. Niles right now? <clears throat> uh, is, is there any uh, uh, hope of enhancing and adding parking in and around the stadium? It is. Uh, as Dr. Williams alluded to, one of the areas that we're looking at, we're actually looking at doing an entire uh, handicap parking section, as well as adding more parking along, uh, along the upper street there at of the home side of the city park on the street circle. Uh-huh. Okay. What is that property used for? The old the old Great Street Pool. What is it used for? I don't know that the city uh park rate does anything with it. We have the volleyball court, same volleyball course behind it. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm not sure there's any designated purpose. One that hopes that we can enhance uh, parking. Yeah, so, board, if you'll look at the image and stare at one of the renderings <clears throat> that's on the screen, uh, really what we're doing is taking the bottom section and replacing the seating that is there. So it'll remain uh, the concrete bleachers with the aluminum seating on top. Um, back in the FDR days, that was some of the stonework that, we, that was used to create that seating. And so that'll be replaced over to the right where the band um, performs. That'll be replaced as well as far as updating that seating. Uh, it's, it's gotten to the point where parts of it are very unstable. Uh, so we'll kind of give a, a new look. You'll also see to the left, uh, those are new seats and new stands uh, there that would replace where the existing bathrooms are located. Uh, one thing we have learned is that we are nowhere near compliance when it comes to the capacity of the stadium as it sits now compared to how many restrooms are available uh, for patrons there uh, at City Park. And so the, the main entrance uh, will continue to be the main entrance coming down, uh, trail a little bit there. Uh, but the biggest part is we'd be adding two ticket booths. The ticket booth that is up on Long Street Circle, we would completely close off and remove and direct all of the tickets towards either this entrance here with the two booths or uh, the two booths that are on the visitor side that will mirror uh, this down the road. The upper grandstand will actually double in size uh, from what it is now. Uh, right now, it is very steep. Uh, this is kind of setting back a little bit more, and you see that it is elevated. Uh, so really just want to give an overall uh, safer experience than what we have now. We are looking at the accessibility for our handrails. If you go down now uh, on any part of those stands, you know that those handrails, little P-shaped handrails, are about every three or four steps. And sometimes that's a far way to go uh, for, for people. And so we're going to be updating uh, that as well. Then the press box, of course, uh, current one will be torn down and a new one will be erected um, there on site. It'll, it'll stand a little taller than the one is now and a little wider. Uh, but the original um, press box, I believe, was in 1984. That's uh, what we could find. Um, we also believe that, that parts of it may be older than that. So uh, there's definitely some improvements that have been made. Uh, right now, there's no access to the top for anyone uh, that is disabled. Uh, there's also some limitations when it comes uh, to communication up there as well. So, uh, board members, you can see that rendering there. Eddie, if you'll go to the next slide down, just a different angle uh, of what that would look like. The entire upper grandstands would have seat backs uh, versus right now there are none. And then this will be the second to last image we'll look at. 
Uh, you can kind of see how the uh, ticket booth on the left side uh, brings you more level into that. Uh, we learned today, uh, we didn't have the photos available for today or the renderings available, but the, um, there's actually gonna be a wall there and you walk down uh, to the field and around the side. So we asked them to keep as much of the topography intact as they can in order to do this. You'll also notice this shed down here in the bottom left. We currently share that shed with the city of Gainesville or Park and Rec. And so we'll be tearing down the aluminum building there and building a, um, a masonry type uh, structure that will allow us to continue to work with the city on housing some of the equipment that is there on site that they also use for camper fields. And then the last uh, image is just from the, um, same one, just kidding. Uh, it showed it just from a different angle, but board members, uh, we will be working with architects and we'll be working with Carol Daniel Construction to get that uh, bid package out. It'll actually be probably later uh, than what Mr. Niles mentioned, just because we, we did run into a couple of snags today, uh, but we will be breaking it up into phase one. Phase one will be, as you look at the picture, the uh, two ticket booths on the left side, the entrance and the new stands, and then replacing all the stands across the front as well as all of the other ticket booths, as uh, Mr. Niles mentioned. And then phase two, which will happen next winter and spring and summer, will be the grandstands and uh, the press box. Uh, we're working it out from a timeline standpoint that the grandstands would be in for the graduation of the class of 2024, that it does not impede uh, graduation. We may not have the press box ready by then, but at least uh, the goal is to have the grandstands so there are no interruptions to, uh, to graduation. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions of Dr. Lewis for Mr. Niles? All right. Thank you, Mr. Niles. Can I ask a question? Yes. Y'all thought about an elevator. There is one yeah, that's one there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not not too many people gonna want to walk up those stairs. <laughs> All right, next up is Ms. Pethel. She's our uh, finance director. Uh, she's going to go over a couple items. First is the fiscal year 24th budget timeline. Yes, good evening. As we begin to prepare for FY 24's budget, um, I want to present the timeline for that. It's pretty much mirrors what we um, presented last year. We we'll start off by having individual school meetings, reviewing where we are for FY23, any training that's needed for the schools, um, et cetera. We'll move on to have department meetings and another school budget meetings as we move into FY24, preparing for that. Uh, also the board uh, meetings during March. And we'll finish up by having the budget and military rate hearings that are required in May and June and potentially and filing options. So it is a typical pattern we've had the last few years. I will say uh, Ms. Beth and I received word on Friday, I believe it was, uh, with the legislature in session now and budgeting conversations. Uh, <clears throat> it was great to hear about uh, additional raises for teachers, but we did have a concerning item that came out of that last week, and that was that Department of Community Health released what the employer responsibility is for health insurance. Uh, we currently pay $945 per month per employee uh, to have insurance. And then they, of course, choose the premiums. Uh, so that's $11,340 a month. It is going up immediately to $1,350 a month. Is that right? $1,350. Oh, my bad. Yeah, $15 something a month. So it's an $8,000 per month per, or excuse me, $8,000 per employee per year increase for us to provide health insurance to our employees. So that's going to have some major ramifications on our budget. Uh, there is uh, some expectation that the state's going to pick it up now for the rest of this fiscal year. So we're okay from our current budget. Uh, there's also the expectation that we'll continue it for teachers or positions that are earned at the state level. But for any position not earned at the state level, Locally, we would have to budget that and consider the cost of, of employing individuals. So it's going to be a, <clears throat> a big adjustment for us down the road and what that long-term effect is going to be. But the good news is we're not in this together. Every school system across the state of Georgia uh, is having to deal with that $635 increase um, from what it is now. Crazy. Are there any other questions that Mrs. Petal on that item? And our principals are concerned about the consolidated funds budgets because they pay the pair pros out of that, and that's a massive increase for them. So we got a, we got a lot of uh, 
in the paper that we see it working. All right, next item is the 2016 bond payoff. Yes, I'm pleased to announce that as of December the 1st, um, Kansas City School District has paid off the 2016 bond. This bond was created for um, the building of a NOTA and Monday Mill. So, board, this, I um, believe when Ms. Pethel and I came on board a few years ago, we had five or six debts we were still paying on. After this, we have one, and it is the current Splaston bond referendum that we have that is doing Gainesville High School and GMS West. So we've reduced it from six deaths down to the one. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Pepper? That's a headline for you, media people. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you, Mr. Pepper. Mr. Pepper, that also means we made it this long. <laughs> All right, next up is uh, Mrs. Allen with the choice enrollment day. Yeah, Miss Allen's not able to be here this evening, so I've got that item covered for her. Uh, board members, uh, we start working on this a little bit in the fall and, and early winter uh, with the principals about uh, enrollment for pre-K, for city residents, for non-city residents, uh, for our current non-resident tuition paying families. Uh, so you see the dates there. There were no changes from last year. We just shifted uh, based on the appropriate date. Uh, the biggest thing we worked on last year that worked really well was trying not to have overlap between kind of two weeks between each of these opportunities. So you can see as choice enrollment ends for elementary and middle, pre-K begins. Uh, and just kind of that rotation between some of those, uh, between, um, between the enrollments, but also some of our scheduling and transition activities for our students. Just want to bring that item to you tonight. All of it's been communicated and will continue to be communicated in the next couple of months. All right. Any questions, Dr. Williams, on that item? Next up is our action item. So first off is the uh, 2023 and 2024 school calendar. Uh, Dr. Williams, if you can kind of go through it, tell us how we arrived at this version. Yeah, being a charter system, one of the things we do is we go back uh, to each of the principals and say, hey, here's about four or five different drafts uh, for you to consider with your governance councils. If you would like to throw in something different with that, uh, you know, feel free to do so. And then all of us come back. And what we try and do is take all of that feedback. I'll give you a, a perfect example. And this came from Monday Mill. Um, it's a very good example, right? Oh, yes. It is. <laughs> so, you know, when COVID hit, we had five days of open house uh, to help reduce the spread and kind of give families that one on one time uh, with the teacher before the school year started to have a positive relationship when school starts. So that when the situation does arise, there's already been uh, a conversation or a meeting uh, that's happened. We reduced that down to three. Uh, the last couple of years, we've been down to two, and two has worked well. But one of the things that we heard from the schools was that, you know, it's really hard to have open house one day and the next day you start school. And so a uh, recommendation came from Monday Mill to move our open house days to that Thursday and Friday. So you've got all the weekend if you need to purchase supplies if you need uh, to work on some scheduling at the middle school and high school if new students have enrolled to take care of those needs to work with transportation department to make sure the routes are ready to go. So a little bit of an adjustment there about when we would do open house. You see your typical dates there of September the 4th with Labor Day. October looks just like it did this year where the students have a five day weekend. Uh, the employees have a four day weekend with a work day. That always coincides with the first nine weeks uh, we try to, but it also is on Columbus Day. Uh, so it kind of tied the timing works out well. Uh, Thanksgiving break, we have the full week, the winter break. There's two weeks in a day. We did have early release uh, the last couple of days for secondary because of the um, exam schedule and midterms. I will tell you this past year, this year in December was the best our middle schools and high schools, my high school have ever done when it comes to getting grades in the grade book on time. Mr. Green, I mean, it was, uh, Mr. Green and his team said oh, look, there, there's, there's no excuse to not have it in by that time versus when you come back after the break and you're thinking about a lot of things. It's been two weeks since you saw the kids uh, just created a rush. Uh, we have uh, MLK on the 15th. We have a work day in February, a work day in March. Kind of every four to five weeks, there's some type of break in there for the kids. Uh, spring break and finishing up. 
the, it, one adjustment that we made after I sent out an email uh, to staff was, do you want a full break in October, a full break in, or a full week in October, a full week in February, or do we want to split those? And 70% of the, the employees said, hey, let's split those. The, the drawback was when we started to look at it and share this with the principals last week was that means our employees are going to have to come back after Memorial Day. So do you sacrifice the two days in February in order to get done by the 24th of May for all employees? And the feedback was, you know, it, it's hard to get kids out on that Friday, Memorial Day weekend. A lot of people want to get out of town and go away for longer than just a three day weekend and then have to come back for a couple of days. And so what we did is we shifted those those uh, two holidays and the work day to just the work day in February so that the kids could be finished on May 22nd. Uh, and then all staff would be finished by the 24th prior uh, to Memorial Day. So basically, uh, Chairman, as it comes down to it, this is almost identical to this year's calendar. Uh, one addition we made on the calendar is to notify parents when summer school is scheduled, which is the Monday through Thursday. Uh, a week or so after we get out of school in the summer, uh, we do half days on those on those three weeks. Williams, I uh, see we have a couple of days of class after graduation. That's the case this year. Too, right? It was last year as well. Last year too. Uh, what it does is it allows us to really get all of the seniors off campus uh, so that those last few days can be final exams because they're not taking final exams at that point. Uh, Mr. Green and his team have to have those grades done so they can do final grades, transcripts, who's graduating, who's not. Um, so, yes, it, it, we're doing it the week before. Uh, one drawback um, with that is that it just really puts more weight on the high school. It does make it more difficult from a scheduling and grading standpoint in some areas for our seniors. Uh, but I believe it's a, a relief to Mr. Green and his team to be able to have that done uh, as a part of, of the schedule. Any other questions or comments? Motion to adopt. I've got a motion to adopt by Mr. Smith. I hear a second. Second. Second by Dr. Ramsey. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Uh, now the voting districts, the division. A, a few years ago, we went with the state legislature and we asked uh, them to kind of clean up our charter. And uh, the board voted on that. And one of the things that in that cleaning up, we had conversations about right now, the school board wards are not aligned with the city council wards. And so in our charter, uh, we indicated that we would follow uh, the city council map. And in this case, the city council approved it, I believe in December, uh, we're bringing it for you tonight. You see the red dots and the blue dots, those represent the existing uh, residences of our of our board members and city council members and so you can't really draw anybody out of their current zone or ward in which they live uh, so you have to work with that a little bit uh, for our board there are some minor adjustments for example when dr ramsey's board it got smaller because monday mill area grew and so there are about 8500 people per ward uh, in this and in the city council versus the gainesville uh, school board school board is elected by the ward and so uh, you see the area, we have a couple of uh, uh, seats up for a few seats up for re-election later this uh, calendar year. Uh, but tonight I bring before you what the city adopted. Uh, and in our case, uh, we did indicate that we would follow that. Uh, so I, I put that forward to you as a board and answer any questions that you have. All right, are there any questions or comments? I have a question. I have a question. Have we included the uh, Revised map that the new town Florida club submitted to the city council and the school board. Every single have we got that on record? Just, just for record. Uh, we do not, but I believe the city council does. Um, yeah. You know, we, we did have a meeting. Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Smith and I met uh, with a few different representatives in the city council. I know that was taken into account, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, I don't know. It, I don't think it changed uh, based on some of those things. Uh, but I do know uh, that it was taken into account and we were looped in on a few different emails. Um, but we do have record of the map that was submitted. Okay. We have a record. Yes. And you know the city had a record. Yes. Okay. I'll be glad to I'll be glad to confirm that, but I know we both have it in emails. Okay. 
a motion to adopt the new voting district tax and plus an amendment to add the traditional qualifying fee of $278 for the two districts that are up for election this year. I will say the power to do the latter. I will say that is two sets. It's being said tonight, but they have to publish it. And so the timing is off. We do plan on Mr. Smith bringing it to our training session uh, later this month on the 30th to get it done by the February 1st date. We're required to talk about February 1st. Okay. We, we wanted to include it with this action item, but since they were meeting tonight, that they were not comfortable doing it since it had not yet been public. City Council, I say, they said, and then we had to approve it. Oh. It's just at the timing of this because it wouldn't change. It hadn't changed in 40 years. <laughs> you, you remember what was changing, was it? I, I don't remember what was changing. I second the motion on the map. And then yeah, you said we'll, we'll have time to. Yeah, we, we, we will. Yeah, yeah, we have training. We've got it before an official action. We will. Yeah. We'll have that as the first action before training. All right. We've got a motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Moore. All those in favor? Motion carries. Anybody opposed? No? Any motion carries? Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, Mrs. Ray, the uh, approval for funding of the GMS West Campus Construction Lab equipment. Just like with um, last year with the Advanced Study Center, we have received um, state grants to support new CTA labs. And so um, at Gates Middle School West, we have received funds for the construction lab marketing lab and uh, family and consumer science and so this is one of our first big purchases of the year um, and we would like to approval on moving forward the state has already approved the items uh, Shane, uh, help me remember where these labs are physically located. first floor of genesis front back towards the back on the right you drive around the back parking lot and you see a storage area. That's that's the extension of that construction classroom for, for storage purposes. And I see that the state CRE grant for this it sounds like it's just for new construction labs. Yes. Does GMS East have similar type lab? Do we have similar type of lab? We have similar labs. Um, they have not been eligible for um, the CTA e grant just because it's not a new build right. or it hasn't been remodeled. Yes, some of the equipment uh, we did <laughs> move from GMS East to West to help this year. Uh, we, we've got to have more happen this summer, probably the following summer. We've got to update some of our CTA labs or exploratory labs over there um, to be more in line with what we're offering out the high school, but also uh, what we have at GMS West. And we will receive these funds again next year when we open the new three story high school. Motion to adopt. I'm going to motion to adopt. Um, second. Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, Mrs. Pethel is back up to go over the November and the December financial statement. Yeah, I do have a little bit of December um, to catch up on presenting the board. So in November, our revenues were at 6.1 million. Our bigger than revenues at 24.7. And that's 30% of our um, budgeted revenues. Expenditures for the month was seven, a little over seven million dollars. And our year to date expenditures of 34. Point four, and that's forty one point six percent um, of our budgeted expenditures. That leaves our ending fund balance uh, for November at fourteen point eight. And last year, our ending fund balance was nineteen point two five. But that's really a combination of a, a couple of things: just the timing of receipts coming in, uh, and more receipts. 
and also um, departments like finance and departments like technology uh, prepay uh, things early in the year. They're kind of annual type things such as insurance, uh, subscriptions, that type of thing. So that kind of makes our two budgets look a little bit higher um, at the beginning of the year. SPLOS receipts, by the way, we're now into SPLOS uh, 6 receipts, SPLOS 5 uh, receipts collections has ended. So for the month of November, we're at 977,000. Um, also keep in mind that now with SPLOS 6, um, the collections that belong to um, Buford City will now be taken out monthly. Instead of at SPLOS 5, it was taken out and for the first month and a portion of the second month. Uh, this will the number we see monthly be net of the new for Yes, exactly. So this is after we yes. get the exactly. Out of curiosity, I can't remember. I know we used to do a year over year. I know it's a different slots, but that 977 for November is pretty close to what we were used to seeing in November. It's, not that, but it's higher. It's higher. It's higher. Yeah. I mean, but this people. time at the beginning of the spots, is that what you're? Well, I just meant last year. Like we were starting year. to see those 900,000 and occasional a million, but that didn't start then. Um, but that's that's by far the best number we've had. Mm -hmm. if, if we can, uh, Kathy, if we can go ahead and put what we collected in January <laughs> through October under the previous floss, but just not have a tally up at the bottom, sure. that way they can compare January to January. So. Okay. And the November number is. For October sales tax, correct. That's my report for November. All right. Uh, we need uh, any motion, motion by Mr. Smith. I hear second. Second. A second by Mr. Norholz. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Motion carries. All right. Now December. Our revenues for December was at 20.6 million. Our year to date revenues at 45.4. And that brings our um, percentage of 55.8 for uh, revenues collected um, against our budget. Expenditures of 5.7 million. Year to date expenditures of 42.2. And that is 50, just slightly over what we, you know, six months out of the year is 50%. The budget, so we're just slightly under there, but uh, again, we're expert expenditures are lower than we were like last year. This time, we're 51%. Ms. Beth, on the revenue, um, it looks like last year we already were at 67 percent budget of revenue, now we're 55 percent. Is that just to add along the time exactly. you're getting this taxes? Exactly, and that's why our fund balance is um, lower than it was at this time last year. As well. It was just absolutely a timing. The city's great to work with, but always can work with us and send receipts. It was just a timing issue. And these reports are based on the cash basis. So it's literally the type that we We're not worried about people not taking the tax. Motion to adopt. I got a motion to uh, adopt the financial statements by Mr. Smith. I hear a second. A second by Dr. Ramsey. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Someone would like to uh, show this gentleman some mercy and approve the personnel report so that she doesn't have to come up here. And... <laughs> I've got a motion by Mr. Nordhol, second by Mr. Mitchell. Yes. If you want to discuss it individually, I'm sure Mr. Jones will be glad to do that. All those in favor? Motion to adopt personnel report. Well, board, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We'll just want to unanimously approve that because Ms. Frierson's retirement <laughs> was, was on that personnel report. You had one chance <laughs> to not accept her retirement. We deserved it. Um, but tonight on the board report, you will see uh, Ms. Frierson's retirement. 30 years in education, uh, well deserved. Uh, so definitely missed. Ms. Collins and I will be meeting tomorrow with Centennial's uh, Governance Council to kind of go over our process and just to kind of remind you as a board kind of what our process is. Uh, we get the Governance Council involved. Uh, Ms. Collins and Ms. Jones will put out 
a vacancy for that position and we'll leave it out there for about three to four weeks, uh, somewhere along that range. The governance council will then review all the applicants. They have to sign a confidential affidavit uh, to, to uh, be a part of that. And then they will interview and recommend up to three, uh, usually two to four in that range uh, to cabinet where we can then interview the finalists and then make a decision about the principal uh, of the school. So Ms. Frierson, we'll miss you. I know you're not gone yet. We still got a few more months. Just remind the rest of the school you're not gone yet either. <laughs> I would be around. Ms. Frierson and I talked about this day 13 years ago, 14 years ago, when she and I did our leadership together. <laughs> and uh, she told me that she would get to re retire 10 years to the day because we do share the same birthday as well. Uh, and so it's just uh, congratulations. That just means I'm losing people that I knew years ago because they're all retiring. Congratulations. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. I right, will. Do we have any discussion on it? There being none, I'd like to accept Mr. Smith's motion to adjourn. Have a second. Second. Second on this board roll. All those in favor? Motion to adjourn. Coming back with the next quarter.